assistants uh, at each position. And we got a great group of young guys that are bought in. Uh, but the funnest part is is the players. I mean, we obviously we got some very very highly talented uh, young men, highly recruited young men. But we got a group of unselfish uh, guys that, that believe in the concept of team. You know, they don't care who gets the credit. They just want to go out and and uh, work their tails off to to get themselves a chance to win. So that's that's what makes it fun. Um, statistically, I don't. You know, I don't even know where we finished. You know, in the country, I'm not a stat guy. You know, I, I'm really concerned about how we play, and those are the things that I'm focused on getting better. The things that we can do uh, within ourselves to, to help us win football games. That's what I'm focused on. Is there a, a is there a challenge though, when they were so efficient and and effective last year, to kind of keep that edge or build? Is it a different challenge than when you're trying to reach, you know, trying to walk up the mountain instead of being like right? You know, I've, that's that's a good question. I've I've you know made this comment to several people this off season that that the challenge that that I'm you know learning to deal with is handling success. You know, I think that's one of the things that's overlooked in all of sports and, and in our society in general is is handling success because it's easy when you're trying to achieve success because you're grinding, you're focused. But then once you've uh, once you've had some success, how do you recenter yourself? How do you rehumble yourself to do exactly what you said to recreate that edge and that chemistry? And I think that's our biggest challenge, you know, offensively. And I think as a team is to to go back to to, to the basics, go back to the basics and recenter ourselves. And we understand what it takes. Now, can we humble ourselves and be committed to doing what it what's necessary to achieve that that edge and that that unselfishness that we had last season? Well, sort of following that up, you know, you, you start out in the Russell Athletic Bowl, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> boom, you know, great performance offense, right. and then it's never let up. So, just what's right. your comfort level now to have you know a full year under your belt doing that? I mean, do you just do you approach every game, every practice, or whatever the same way you did that that first night in Orlando, mm -hmm. or, or has it changed a little bit now that you're you know, I have to. I have to approach it that same way. You know, that's my responsibility to, to the young men that play for us, that, that they got to get my best. And if I'm asking them to be humble, to be unselfish, then I have to be the same way. And, I, and I'm not a person that likes to, to lead by uh, what I say. I'd rather lead by what I do. And so I have to approach it, you know, that every practice and every game is the most important game uh, that we play in. Uh, and for me, you know, going back and reflecting on the season, there are a lot of things that I could have done better. You know, and so that motivates me to approach it that way, that, that yes, we've had some success, but but I also know too that that you know it's not always going to be that way, and I have to prepare myself to, to to have that drive and that hunger because adversity is going to come at some point. I mean, there's no question. I mean, that's that's how life is. You know, it's it's a series of of good times and a series of bad times, and it's all about how you respond to each situation. And and so, you know, this this season going into it, really just focusing on what can I do better, and then how can I can how can I portray uh, day in and day out that consistency to being committed to being my best in everything that I do and it starts with everything is important there's no detail that's unimportant uh, and you have to be humble to be able to pay attention to details day in and day out. Is the wide receiver position in particular might be a place where you really can be guys to be unselfish and maybe patient and not care who gets the credit it just calls how deep you guys are? You know I think all positions uh, but obviously wide receivers you know there's only three on the field at a time um, and we try to be balanced, so we're going to throw it half the time, run it half the time, and so those guys are going to have to be be unselfish and, and focus on the big picture of, of, of winning football games and not caring, you know, who gets the success. And, and a great example is you look at Zach Brooks, you know, a guy that was a, was a backup to Wayne Gallman, and he gets his name called, you know, by the Seattle Seahawks, you know, in the, in the NFL draft. So just understanding that, put your best foot forward, and don't get caught up in, in what everybody outside the program is talking about statistics and catches and this and that, and, and go be a part of. A, of a championship team so that you're associated with that for the rest of your life because I think at the end of the day people are going to truly judge you on, on where you came from and what your body of work is as opposed to just a statistical number. Tony, that same vein, is there any kind of downside whatsoever to having too many playmakers? Can that affect chemistry because you're trying to keep everybody happy? Is that ever a negative? You know, I, I think it, it could be a negative if, if people start listening to the wrong voices. But, you know, what, what, what I think is, is special about not just the offense but our, our program in general is just the, the mentality of no entitlement. You know, these guys understand that there's no entitlement. You're not entitled to anything. You have to earn everything that you get. And, and the, the positive of that is when you earn something, you appreciate it and you're willing to share it with others and you don't take it for granted. And I think that that's, you know, something that Coach Sweeney does 
an unbelievable job with our players, and it resonates on offense. And then the guys saw the, the result of doing that. You know, we had a chance to, to, to play in a national championship. And I think above all, if you go ask those guys, would you rather play in a national championship and win a championship for your program or have a great statistical season? I'm pretty sure they're all going to choose, let's go win a championship. And so then it's just getting them to commit to the mindset that I got to humble myself and do whatever it takes, whatever my role is, because there is no role that's unimportant. You know, whether you're the guy that's that's uh, catching all the passes or you're the scout team guy, every job is important within our program, and you got to take pride in it. And then just be a star in your role. So if your role is to, to be a backup, then be a star as a backup. If your role is to be the star, then be the star as the star. Uh, so just getting those guys to understand that. Tony, is there any additional pressure after winning the ACC title, getting to the championship game? Is there any additional pressure this year when people expect the same things out of you that happened last year? You know, I think the perception is that, but for me personally, the, the only pressure I feel is to the young men in that room that are looking at me uh, when we're installing the offense uh, and then we're putting a game plan together. That's the only pressure that I feel. I, I don't read anything. I don't listen to anything. I, I try to tell my wife, don't look and listen to anything because, you know, we know how it is. You can't make everybody happy all the time. But at the end of the day, if I'm doing everything I can to put my best foot forward for these young men, then I think that they're, they're going to do the same. And if we got that level of commitment, then, you know, whatever the, the outcome is, you know, to us, it's going to be a success. It seems like you're running backs, too. There's a you know, a, a, a lot of a lot of them who want to make <laughs> some plays. How do you work Tavian into the in, into the whole mix with you know the single season rushing leader coming back for another year after he was so successful right. last year? You know that that'll be determined. You know, once we get get him in pads, get him out on the field, you know, see him run around, see how much he can retain, see how much he's absorbed uh, throughout the course of camp. Uh, obviously, we know he has a skill set that is. Um, that is is different than what we have in that room. Obviously, we got guys that can catch the ball out of backfield. We got guys that can run great between the tackles. But he has that that complete package yeah. where he can be a guy that can run between the tackles. He can hit the home run if he gets to the second level. He can be a very dynamic out of the backfield. You can line him up at the slot. You know, he's 210 pounds right now. He's only going to get bigger. He'll be able to hold up in pass protection once he learns the technique and the and the identification of defense. So you know, he's got a skill set. But what you don't want to do is put the uh, the the cart before the horse, you know, I've learned dealing with the with the running backs, a lot of of their of, of what they do is confidence. And so what you don't want to do is you don't want to put a, man, a young man in a situation he's not prepared for and damage his confidence. And then you do have, you know, the luxury of having some talented guys. But what I like the most about uh, what I've seen so far out of uh, out of Mr. Feaster is, you know, he's attached himself at the hip with Wayne Gallman. You know, you see those two uh, hanging out together. So that shows me that the the, the old dog is ready to teach the new dog, but then the new dog is ready to learn from the old dog. And when you have that kind of kind of chemistry, it's all going to work itself out. Not that you guys weren't already recruiting really well, but are you able to recruit more nationally maybe with the seasons that you've had recently, particularly the last year? You know, I think you're getting the attention of, of, of young men, some of the top players around the country. Now, recruiting's not easy. Um, you know, I think the perception is because of where the brand is that we just walk in, show the tiger paw, and guys say, I'm coming. Uh, well, obviously, we're, we're in a different um, atmosphere in terms of who we're recruiting against. And so, you know, the, the teams that we're recruiting against, I mean, they got great coaches, they got great facilities, they got great programs in, uh, in place, and they work their tails off. But it is nice that now, you know, when you do say that hey, Clemson's interested in a young man nationally, that he's going to say, oh, Clemson, I want to take a look. Or as opposed to the past, he's a Clemson, where's that at? You know, they all knew we had a Tiger Pop, but where is it at? Now they know that it's in South Carolina. We play in the ACC, and you have an opportunity to win. So it's, it's nice to have that brand recognition. Because of lesser unknowns on offense this year, mm -hmm. did that change your offseason? Did it change what you worked on and, and the areas you wanted to develop without having to kind of figure out your depth chart? Correct. You know, and, and that's a good question. And, and, yes, it is nice to know what you have coming back, uh, but you also got to understand that, that – who they were last year doesn't necessarily mean that's who they're going to be this year. So there is that unknown of how are they going to come in the camp, what is going to be the mindset, how are they going to approach and attack the offseason. Um, but in terms for us as coaches, just an opportunity really to study ourselves. You know, we think that, that with the, that many guys coming back, it's going to come down to us on offense. Obviously, we're going to play some really, really talented defenses. They're going to have defensive schemes to try to stop us. But at the end of the day, it's going to come back to us executing. And the guys know what it takes to execute. The biggest question is, can we change some things offensively just to help ourselves have an advantage uh, here and there? But more importantly, are the guys going to come back with the same mindset? Even though they're the same talent, are they going to come back with the same mindset so they can go out and execute? what he did last year. Tony, I guess in that vein, it helps to have 
a leader like Deshaun who sets the example for everybody else. Right. So, you know, that kind of takes some of that weight off the shoulders. Right. Yeah. You know, it does. And, uh, and you know, that's an area where Deshaun is, is improving every day because, uh, obviously, uh, talent-wise, there's no question. You know, he's the best, play, best player on the field. Preparation-wise, there's no question he's the best player on the field. You know, he's not the most vocal guy, uh, but I think that a lot of times everybody wants the most vocal guy to be the leader, and that's not always the case. When you when you pull the, the guys that are following the leaders, a lot of times you realize it's the guy that walks the walk and not talks the talk. So it's great to have him, but we got other great leaders uh, that have emerged. Uh, Jay Guillermo. You know, we talked about it last year, but you know, he, to me, he's the he's the rock. You know, he's the rock. Obviously, Deshaun gets a lot of the credit, and, and it's and it's rightfully deserved. But Jay Guillermo is the guy that that holds everything together. And and we talked about wideouts, we talked about tight ends, quarterbacks, running backs, you know, all those skill guys. But the difference in last season, in my opinion, was the five guys up front and how they gelled and how they how they performed. And and so we have all those skill guys coming back. But if we don't have that cohesion of those five guys up front, and we got a couple guys filling in, you got Jake coming in at the right tackle, you got Taylor Hearn coming in at left guard, uh, you know, Tyrone and Maverick. Have really been battling for that for that right guard spot so so he's he's you know in my opinion the the leader uh, but doesn't get the credit and then Wayne's really stepped up and and having Mike back and then Artavis Scott has really emerged and really really taken his uh, his leadership role serious and then Jordan Leggett you know has gone from the guy that when he first got here that we said he was lazy Leggett and now I call him Leggett the leader because now he's being a leader and he's really rallying the guys. How pleased were you with uh, Sean and Tremaine in, in their development, and not only mentally or physically, but also mentally? Um, where are they with the learning process? And can right. you kind of compare where they are now to where uh, Jake and Dick were uh, right. uh, coming in last year? Very, very pleased and very, very similar uh, in terms of, of coming in the door. They both come from, from great programs, just like Mitch and Jake came from great programs. You know, I think Jake was coming off of a shoulder surgery, so he wasn't quite physically where those guys are when they came in the door. Uh, but I think mentally, the comparison is very fair to where Mitch and uh, Mitch and Jake were very pleased with them, and we're going to be counting on them to go compete uh, once we open up camp on the second. How about uh, Noah Green and kind of where what's his status mm -hmm. like right now? And is he kind of just because of, all, of the injury situation mm -hmm. and the redshirt year? Is he maybe another year away from kind of getting in the mix as far right. as the playing time? You know, I don't say he's a year away. Um, obviously, he's got to go out and, and perform, and he had a little bit of a, of a hiccup there in, uh, in spring ball that kept him out a little bit. But now he's back healthy. He's done everything this summer. Uh, we're counting on him to go in there and, and start him out there at, at left tackle and let him go compete and behind Mitch and him and, and uh, Tremaine at that left tackle spot. And, and so we're expecting him to, to be ready to roll. And all indications this summer is that he's ready to roll. He's just got to go and prove it. So I wouldn't say he's a year away. Uh, because, again, one of the things that I think helped us last year is being able to play multiple guys on an offensive line. And, uh, and right now, if, if we can have, you know, ten guys, you know, ready to roll, that helps us tremendously. How difficult was it for you adjusting to new responsibilities time-wise and figuring out how to manage all that? And then how will that now help you going into your, your second year? You know, I, I think with, with anybody that's, that's given a new opportunity, your first reaction is to put your arms around it and say, this is mine and i got to do it by myself and you, you're in charge of everything. Every single detail you want to want to micromanage, you know. But as the, the course of the season went on, you know, I started to, to grow more comfortable with everybody in the room, and, and truthfully, you know, I couldn't do it by myself. That's one thing that I learned, and so I had to, you know, delegate responsibilities. And now, uh, understanding the amount of time that it takes to put a game plan together, you know, I'll be more efficient this season and be able to delegate more. Because uh, again, now you got everybody that's that's been with Jeff and I for a year. They understand what we think. They understand the process and putting a game plan together, so we can divvy up responsibility. And then that helps too because on game day now everybody's eyes are where they need to be. Everybody's on the same page, and so it's not just you know Coach Elliott or the guys in the box that are that are looking down that know the answers. People on the sideline know the answers, and so we can all collaborate and get to the best uh, you know the best situations. When you face a big opponent in the opener like Auburn, and it's been a couple of years yep. since Georgia for y'all. Um, but how, how does that change? That how, how much of, of an advantage is that for you in terms of your preparation, your scouting, um, having that extra time? Um, and how, how, how much similar is it to your preparation when you only have four or five days to prepare for an opponent? You know, in terms of answer, the, the, it's, it's, it's a lot less stressful when you have more time because uh, you can spend the summer, you can spend fall camp getting ready for that opponent, but then there's also some unknowns. You know, going into a, a five-day game plan, 
uh, there's not a whole lot that they can change. Now they're going to tweak some things that you're prepared for. You know, he's had all off season to study us. Obviously, Coach Steele was on the staff here, so he's familiar with the offense. He's now been with Gus, which is a similar offense. So you know, he's got opportunities this off season to tweak. So there's a little bit of stress there in terms of preparing for the unknown. Now addressing the issue of, of because it's Auburn, you know, we don't focus on that. Uh, you know, the big thing for us is we want to finish in 2016, and when we go back and watch the championship game, give credit to Alabama, they won the game. They're a great team, but there were some things we could have done better that, that we felt like, you know, at the end we lost to Clemson. And so the big thing for us is to approach it as we're getting ready to play ourselves and the challenge of, yes, Auburn's going to be gunning for us because we got the big target, but then, you know, we got to challenge ourselves to be gunning for ourselves to be the best that we can be in every game that we play. It doesn't matter if it's Auburn, South Carolina State, Troy, you know, anybody on the schedule, we're going to prepare the same way. You mentioned Coach Steele. How, how much does your familiarity with him help you in game planning for their defense? You know, uh, he's been gone, you know, for a while, and, and day in and day out I've been seeing Coach B, and uh, I think – Going against Coach B prepares you for anybody that you're going to go against just because of the, the multiple schemes that you see with him and just the intensity. Um, but just having an opportunity to go back and study him this summer just to re-familiarize myself with him and then also trying to anticipate what are going to be some of the things that he's going to do different uh, that we may not have seen out of him uh, since, uh, since the LSU bowl game. What do you expect out of choice and die this season? I expect them to come to work every day and give me their best and be ready to compete. And of all of them, I expect that if if their number is called, that there's no drop off between whoever's the guy out there in the number one position. So, you know, really, really excited for those guys. Really excited for Tyshawn because now he's really had an opportunity to be healthy. You know, complete the spring healthy. He's been healthy all summer, so now he's going to have more confidence. He's going to feel better about his body to go compete. And you know, now Choice, you know, has had an opportunity to go through spring ball, confident in his knee, just continuing to work all summer to develop his knowledge of the system, gain confidence in pass protection from a knowledge standpoint because physically you can't do a whole lot in the summer without pass. But I really expect those guys to go push Wayne. Um, and I know Wayne is going to push himself, but but also giving me some some leverage on Wayne. Like Wayne, you got to be you know at your best, or I got these guys right here that want your job. What what expectations have you had grown around this program exponentially in the last few years, from just making it to an ACC championship game to winning it, right. BCS game? Now that the national championship is kind of the expectation everybody right. set for this year, is there any additional pressure that you feel as a coach or any? Any different feeling around this year? Right. You know, I think outside, uh, maybe in the media and, and, and outside when you're when you're traveling around in the airport and you see a, somebody sees a tiger paw, you get a lot more questions and a lot more attention. But internally, you know, the biggest pressure that I feel is to be my best for the young men you know, on that offensive side of the ball uh, to help put together the best game plan. Like, like I was saying earlier, I don't read nothing, I don't listen to nothing, I tell my wife not to listen to nothing because all I want to do is focus on being my best for the guys in the room. At the end of the day, that's what matters. And I think that's why you saw the success last year, because those guys said, you know what, block out all distractions and just focus on these guys in the room and me being my best because I'm accountable to my brother standing next to me. So that's the only pressure that I feel um, is just to be my best for the young men. Now, how about uh, the players? Have you got a sense of any additional, um, not pressure, but you know, accountability they put on themselves to get the game for this year? And also <laughs> you know, uh, I think so, but I think it, it really goes back to the foundation of our program. You know, every year we start over. And those guys expect and, and believe that, you know, not just last year, but we believed over the last five years that we should be playing, you know, in the national championship. We were one of the 10 to 12 best teams in the country that could get it done. But we also understood that there's a lot that goes into it. And there's a certain level of humility and commitment to, to your best that you have to have in order for the, 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 the run to happen to a national championship. So I don't think the guys are focusing on it, but I think there is a little bit of a taste in their mouth that they've kind of, you know, log that feeling after that uh, after that game in that locker room in the back of their minds, but they're committed to you know the foundation and principles of our of our program, and that's a you know best is the standard in everything that you do. And then if we if we commit to that and we just go to work, then we'll look up at the end of the season and see where we're at. That's really all that matters is where we're at the end of the season. It seems like one of the big areas of improvement for Wayne um, towards the end of last season and then throughout the spring was was catching the ball out of the backfield. Um, now you also throw Tavian Feaster into the mix, and he has unbelievable hands for a running back. So um, puts a little it, pressure on him. Yeah, <laughs> and does well does that uh, can fans expect to see a, a lot more receptions by the running backs next season? You think? You know, it it hopefully. You know, it's gonna go. It's gonna depend on how defenses try to 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 defend us. 
and then Deshaun understanding where the back, sit, back fits in all of the, the passing schemes and being able to get him the ball. Uh, obviously for Wayne, that's more of a, of a you know, issue for his future, you know, going to the next level and just being a complete player. Um, you know, with, with and you know, everybody talks about feature, but Choice is a very, very good receiver out of the backfield. Tyshawn's a very, very good receiver out of the backfield. And, and, and so I would like to say that you'd like to see more of that, but it's really going to depend upon how people try to defend us. I know Deshaun said he thought he could still get a lot better. Did you, do you buy into that? And do you think this summer going around in the different camps and stuff helped him? You know, I, I think that you know, having an opportunity to go out and compare yourself against the, the other guys that are considered the best in the country will give you an opportunity to internalize where you're at and see areas for improvement. So I would agree with Deshaun that, that he could get better, but I think in order for him to get better, it's going to really hinge on him being himself. And that making that statement, that comment, just you know, exemplifies who he is. He's a young man that's always critical of himself, not in a negative way to where he beats himself up to where you know his, his attitude is, is, is not where it needs to be, but it's constructive criticism and it drives, you know, it drives who he is uh, as a player. Did he say anything about maybe what he learned that going around in the different camps and kind of comparing himself? You know, I haven't I haven't had a chance to sit down and talk with him. Uh, he may have shared that with Coach Streeter. You know, I don't I don't mess with Deshaun too much. <laughs> You know, um, you know, we talk about family, 